Okay, going through another differential equation example. Now we have that the first derivative of a function, in this case a function of position, is equal to twice that function divided by the position itself. So we're looking for an f of x that will satisfy this. So this is a different form than a lot of the other ones we see. So it isn't necessarily that the same example uh, is going to work. And so if you think about sine and cosine, well, those derivatives would give you other sinusoidal functions back. There wouldn't be this 1 over x dependence. Same if you had e to the x, e to the negative ix, things like that. So instead, let's guess a polynomial. And so we can do this in kind of a general way. So let's say I'm really not sure. I think it might be a polynomial. Let's just try it. So I'm going to say ax to the n. So I expect a to be my free parameter. This is a first derivative. I think I'm going to have one free parameter. n is now something that I think I need to solve for. Now, in fact, this might be a x to the n, and there might be an x to the n plus 1 or minus 1. Like, there might be a bunch of stuff happening here. But let's start with something simple. So when I take my derivative, we now are saying, OK, what is my derivative of a x to the n? Well, that coefficient up front doesn't change, and I think you know how to take the derivative of a polynomial. n comes down, and then I have x to the n minus 1. So now I come back and I say, OK, let's try to figure out what n must be, given that this is what my derivative is. So on the left side, I'll have my a, n, x, x, uh, oh, sorry, uh, n minus 1. And then on the right, I'll have 2 that original function x to the n over x. Well, so if we look, we get to cross off a on both sides. That's nice. And that's what you expect. It's a free parameter that would be defined by something different happening in your system. And so I'm now left with n x to the n minus 1. But now look what's happened over here. I have x to the n divided by x. That's the same as x to the n minus 1. Cool, that cancels 2. We are left with n equals 2. So this can be true if I select n equals 2. So what that means is that actually it was a x squared. So you take the derivative of this. You're going to get a 2. You've lost the term of x. Maybe you could have figured that out just by looking at it. So this was not a hard example. It's not one that's going to come up in quantum mechanics. The point is just sometimes we plug in additional variables, and we're using the differential equation itself to figure out what those variables must be. So recognize that sometimes you're solving for the general form of the function, but usually we're guessing something and then figuring out from the differential equation a parameter of the function. In this case, that capital A, nothing here is constraining it. It's unknown. This could be 3. This could be negative i. It's just a coefficient up front.